So this is, uh, this is the first eight bars or so of the third movement of Bach's Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 2. It's a, it's a famous piece of music which, which many of you I'm sure are familiar with. It, it kind of sounds like this. So on, so on. And, and the, point of, uh, the point of showing this is that when uh, a conductor looks at this, this is the score, the conductor gets a depiction of the signal that shows that you've got two people playing here at the beginning of the third movement, and this trumpet player is going to be playing a certain frequency for a certain amount of time, and then another frequency for a certain amount of time. And this is the way the human ear uh, perceives this thing, is that you've got the C and then you've got the G. And uh, if I play this thing uh, out the speaker, then you'll, you'll hear what it really sounds like. And that is something like this. Oops, not like that. That is something like this. And you can see, you can see from the from the graph here that this is a this is a somewhat complicated waveform. And when we represent this signal in terms of the Fourier transform, then we're thinking of the signal as a sum of sine waves. And the key about that is that each one of those sine waves has to have a constant amplitude and a constant uh, a linear phase. So uh, if you want to have the C, the C note, you can't have it for just a few seconds or a part of a second. You have to have it the whole time. So how do you make this signal go from a C to a G? Well, you have to add up a bunch of sine waves so that what happens when you add sine waves? They constructively and destructively interfere with each other to, to make the resultant waveform be uh, going from a C to a G. So let's take that same signal and look at just the first term of the sum. Look at the biggest sine wave that's in there. Here's what it sounds like. And is this the way that your ear perceives the signal as a sum of these things? Well, I argue that it's not. In fact, let's look at the sum of the first two terms from the DFT. Notice now when we add two sine waves together, that they are going to interfere with each other. And you can see in particular that there is some destructive interference that causes the resultant signal to have an amplitude that decreases with time because of the destructive interference. And what happens if we add together not just the first two DFT terms, but the first 100? Now we've got 100 sine waves, each one of them with a constant amplitude and a linear phase of constant frequency, interfering with each other. And you can see that the constructive and destructive interference to your ear, I'll let you listen for a second, this thing is starting to sound like it's swimming. You're starting to hear almost like notes coming out. And that's because these sine waves, each one of which is just a pure tone, they interfere with each other to make this time-varying perception in the signal. And again, if we add up all of them, I don't remember how many, maybe 20,000 of those terms, then they constructively interfere with each other and destructively interfere to give you this. And that's how the Fourier transform works.